Merry Christmas. This this video is going up on Christmas. Uh, it's the show where we talk about my movie nights. And last time it was a Christmas horror triple feature. Started off with what I consider to be a bit of an underrated classic, Silent Night, Deadly Night. One of my favorites. Um, my, my friend and I watched this kind of with the expectation that it would be like a hilarious, silly movie, because a lot of Christmas horror movies are kind of silly. And I think we had it confused for part two, because Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 1 is actually pretty good. It's sort of this character study of this guy, Billy, because um, of course his fucking name is Billy, because fucking every horror movie has a character named Billy. If you let a horror franchise go on long enough, one of the characters will eventually be named Billy. Not Bill, not William, Billy. Every horror franchise has a Billy. So when, when Billy's like a little, little kid, his grandfather tells him that, like, Santa punishes bad children. And as it would happen, that same night, a guy dressed as Santa uh, ends up shooting his parents. So he's, he's sort of got this association that, like, Santa kills people who are naughty. And then he grows up in this uh, Catholic orphanage. And the Mother Superior is super strict and tells him all these things that are right and wrong. So it's it's this interesting sort of look at, like, a guy who, who comes to believe that Santa kills naughty people on Christmas. And w with very specific ideas about what is and isn't naughty. And then he ends up working for a department store and they need him to fill the role of Santa on Christmas Eve. And at the end of the night, they're like, oh yeah, big employee party. So everyone's kind of drunk and, and um, he sees one of his co-workers kind of roughing up this girl. I think he likes, they kind of imply he likes her. And he's roughing her up and this other guy keeps calling him Santa. So he's like drunk. Guy keeps calling him Santa, he's seen stuff he doesn't like, and he just sort of snaps, and he's like, I am Santa. And so now he's out to do the thing he thinks Santa does. Kill naughty people. It's it's really interesting, I mean, I, I complained last time about horror films where the kills don't start until, like, way later in the movie, but I, I think it works with Silent Night, Deadly Night. Like, it's a there's a good setup to this character. He doesn't just show up and start killing people. I, I think he's possibly the most sympathetic slasher villain. Uh, mo most slasher movies don't give their characters this much backstory. So I, I appreciate that. I think it's a really interesting character study. And, you know, the slasher bits are really good, too. Lots of violence, lots of blood. I, honestly, I could almost go for, like, fewer kills. Spend a little more time developing Billy and then get on with the kills. But eh. either way, like, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching this movie. This is a good movie. Uh, it got slammed when it came out. It was, it was super controversial. Because people are like, oh my god, you can't do a killer Santa movie. You're going to scare children. This wasn't even the first killer Santa movie. Christmas Evil, the, the last movie we'll be talking about here, came out four years before this. Um, and it ran into some issues, but not nearly as many as Silent Night, Deadly Night. Probably because it's not as graphic. Silent Night, Deadly Night's a pretty fucking graphic movie. And I mean, I watched the uncut for this has the uncut version. And the uncut version's like even worse. Um, and you, you can absolutely tell which parts were cut out. Because like the film is a lot yellower in those portions. So... I do, I do kind of like that, though. I like seeing what got cut and what stayed in. 
And yeah, what got cut is pretty much what you'd expect. It's just like extra gore shots that didn't make it into the movie. Not that much got cut even. Probably less than a minute of footage. Plenty of creative kills in this movie. He, he, like, the iconic image is, like, him with an axe. I mean, you got the arm coming out of the chimney with the axe, and, like, the iconic image of Billy, the, the villain from the movie, is him, like, walking around carrying this axe. But he doesn't end up killing anyone with the axe until, like, deep into the movie. Uh, cause... Because first he kills a bunch of people in, like, the store he works at. Doesn't kill any of them with an axe. But then he walks out with the axe to go to this other random house uh, where, uh, with famous scream queen Linnea Quigley. Um, who, who Matt presents viewers might remember from Night of the Demons. Night of the Demons, plural. Pretty well-known scream queen uh, Linnea Quigley. Um, who is, I, I'm pretty sure she's topless the entire time she's on screen. Like, she's, she's about to have sex with her boyfriend, and she takes her top off, and she, she never puts it back on. Like, she's even, like, they're about to have sex, and she's like, wait, I hear the cat outside. Let me let the cat in. And it's like, first off, if we're about to bang, the cat can stay outside, you know? Just, like, a couple more minutes cat can wait um secondarily she just like she puts on like a pair of booty shorts and then just goes and opens the door to let her cat in completely topless in the middle of winter even <laughs> it's you know it's christmas it's the middle of winter uh he, of course infamously one of the best probably the best kill in the movie he he impales her on these uh, like, deer antlers hanging over the mantle. Um, I used a clip of it in my, uh... Fuck. <sighs> Christmas is here again review. So, the sick reference. It's a Silent Night, Deadly Night. And then he, he like, strangles the guy to death. Doesn't use the axe on either of them. So, <laughs> he's he's gone two different places. Hasn't killed anyone with an axe. He does finally kill one kid with an axe. He, there's, like, some bullies. And, uh, I don't like bullies. They say that in the second movie. They're like, oh, that Billy. Billy doesn't like bullies. And I'm like, oh, man, it's fucking cool cat. Billy is cool cat. Um, he, kill, he kills one of the bullies with an axe. And I think... I think he kills one more person with the axe, but I can't quite remember. He might he might only kill one person with an axe in the entire movie. The uh the rare slasher where people other than the main character get a couple kills in. Because of course there's like the uh the gas station robber who who shoots both of his parents at the beginning of the movie. But there's a scene where, like, the cops pull up and see this guy dressed as Santa walking towards the orphanage, and they just fucking shoot him in front of these kids. And it's like, dude, you just shot Santa in front of a bunch of kids. Even if it's... Even if it was Billy, that's not a great idea. But then it's not even Billy! It's, like... There's actually a contradiction. Uh, in the first movie, they're like, oh, that's Father... Whatever his name was. I forget his name. The, it's one of the priests from the local parish, and he's he was their Santa that year, but he was deaf. Then in the second movie, they say it was the janitor. So, um, mistake on the second movie's part, which is stupid, because... We'll get to it. We'll get to the second movie. But uh, they, shoot, they shoot this old man, <laughs> who's, like, deaf, so that he, he couldn't hear the police screaming... Just shoot this old guy in front of the kids. And it's like, damn. Like, apart from, like, the serial killer Santa, like, four other people have died unrelated to him in this movie. I mean, I mean, other people have died for reasons other than him. Some of those people were actually related to him. All, all of the Santas in this... There's three different people in Santa costumes... 
but it's the same Santa costume. And you can tell it's the same Santa costume because they've got bells around, like, the end of the sleeve. And it's like, wow, production bought one Santa suit and then had all three people who dress as Santa in this movie wear the exact same Santa suits. Because, like, I don't think it's super unrealistic that Billy and, like, the the father who was co- showing up to to the orphanage got the same costume. They could have bought their costumes at the same place. Or, well, the store bought Billy's costume. But they could have bought the suits from the same place. But then, like, the dude robbing the bank was, like, ten years earlier. And it's like, why is he wearing the exact same Santa suit? <laughs> Did he... You're telling me, like, in, in ten years, there was, they didn't change up this Santa costume at all? And I, I wouldn't even notice if it weren't for the bells. Like, if the bells were gone, I'd just be like, yeah, generic Santa costume. But the bells are very distinctive. <laughs> the best fucking scene. The best fucking scene in this movie. This, like, little girl. It's Lin- Linnea Quigley's little sister comes out. Not her real little sister. Her character's little sister comes out after she and her boyfriend have been murdered and Billy's like oh have you been good this year and she's like yeah yeah are you sure and you see him like pulling a box cutter out of his pocket and she's like yes I've been good this year and and then he just gives her the box cutter and he's like Merry Christmas here's your present and I'm like it's great it's the most fucked up scene I love it so much (laughs) he just fucking gives a kid a box cutter that he used to slice a person open like ten minutes ago. Ah, oh. Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's it's so good. It's such a good movie. Like I I genuinely think they do a good job with the characters. It's like a good character study, and it's a good like fun slasher movie. It it, it manages to be both of those things. So I really appreciate it for that. Then we watched Silent Night, Deadly Night two, the sequel, which. They just, like, had no fucking money for, so, like, half of it is recycled footage from the first movie. I think it's almost half, in fact, it's, like, 40 minutes of the first movie and then 45 minutes of new footage, which is, like, It's not the only film that did that. A couple movies did that in the 80s. Um, not too many, because... People get upset when you did that. Boogeyman 2, I know, did it in 83, so well before uh, Part 2. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2, because that was 87. Um, Boogeyman 2 did it. I know there's one or two others. I just can't think of off the top of my head. So, uh, basically, the plot of Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 is the first half of the movie is just Billy's brother, Ricky, recounting the events of the first film, which is so fucking ridiculous. Because, <laughs> like, he he recounts a lot of stuff that he just, like, wasn't there for, but most of it has Billy in it. So you could kind of go, like, okay, maybe Billy told him about it, or maybe he learned later that that's what Billy did. But then he recounts, like, the the Santa guy robbing a gas station, and it's like, you weren't there. No one you know was there. That's something you couldn't possibly have known about. It'd be just as easy for him to not remember that. That's not, like, an important detail to this story. But nah, he just remembers an important detail that he wasn't there for. Which is kind of the curse of these, like, using all the footage from the first movie movies. Because they're all like, oh, I remember what happened in the last movie. And then they'll say something that they could not possibly remember. So, yeah, you get kind of the condensed version of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 1, which, to their credit, that might have been necessary because uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 1 got pulled pretty quick because of how controversial it is. 
So there might have been people in the audience who weren't actually familiar with the first film. But still, that's a really annoying way to start your sequel. By just telling the story of another movie. Then about halfway into the movie, it's Ricky telling his story about how he became a killer as well. Gotta say, Ricky's story, a lot less interesting. There are still some fun bits, but it's it's a much less interesting or character-driven story. I mean, he just, he, he, like, you have those moments of him, like, doing weird stuff. He kills, like, two people, and then at one point he gets a gun, and then he just, like, walks down the street and shoots, like, f like, like, ten people just standing around. He shoots, he shoots his girlfriend's ex, and then he shoots his girlfriend, and then he shoots a bunch of random people he doesn't know, and he says the greatest line in cinema history, GARBAGE DAY! And shoots a guy. And he, he, like, he shoots someone driving a car and they, like, go off a ramp and, like, crash. And it's, like, so fucking excessive. And it's not even Christmas. He doesn't even do that at Christmas. The, the, the movie takes place at Christmas. He's telling, like, the, the jail psychiatrist, uh, the, the mental ward psychiatrist, I guess, about this on Christmas Day. But, like, his killing spree doesn't even happen on Christmas. Um, and then, and then he escapes from prison to go kill Mother Superior for, for being mean. Because Billy almost kills her. He almost kills her at the end of the first one. But he gets shot by police before he can. Um, so now Ricky has to go do it. Ricky also gets shot by police at the end, but then he wakes up and it's it's implied that he's like still alive, which is confirmed because he appears in the third and fourth movie, played by much more popular actors than the guy in this movie. Is uh oh what's the guy's name? I'm sure it says back here. Eric Freeman. Eric Freeman kind of disappeared after Silent Night Deadly Night Part 2. Uh, so, like, when Garbage Day was a big meme, uh, a lot of people were trying to find him. Because <laughs> he, he'd kind of, like, left the industry, and they're like, Ooh, what happened to Eric Freeman, the guy who said Garbage Day? But uh, then, in the sequel, he's played by Bill Molesley of, uh... Bill Mo... Bill Molesey of... <laughs> Of House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects trilogy fame, and uh, Texas Chainsaw 2. And then in the fourth one, he's played by Clint Howard, who is the person I... He, he appears in Three from Hell, and he's the person I couldn't remember in that video. I'm like, oh, there was one more horror person. Who was it? It was Clint Howard. I forgot Clint Howard. My bad. That's... I think it's funny that he and Bill Molesey... We're in a movie together since they both played Ricky from Silent Night, Deadly Night. And then part five doesn't have anything the fuck to do with the other four. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen the other three. Part three, part four, or part five. Um, I might. Probably won't recommend it on this show, but I might watch them. Because they... I like watching bad movies, you know. <laughs> you know how it is. And I mean, like... I like Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 1, and for what it's worth, I think Part 2 is an interesting film. I don't regret watching it. I did, there was a point where I'm kind of like, alright, I'm, I'm skipping through the Part 1 scenes. Like, you don't need to watch the Part 1 scenes, so you can you fast forward through that. But the original stuff, the stuff with Ricky, that, that I actually liked. Um, it's not good, but like... I don't know, Eric Freeman's performance is pretty funny to watch. And it's not... He is playing a crazy person, so it almost works. But but then there's just, like, weird little oddities in there, like Garbage Day. Where you're just like, what the fuck? Um, according to Freeman... The director did not give him very good direction on that. Like, he, he had nothing to work with. And the director has confirmed that. He's like, oh yeah, I 
didn't know what I was doing. Because I think this was directed by, like, an editor. Like, they told an editor, like, Hey, can you make us a Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 using as much footage from the first film as possible? Like, as low of a budget as you possibly can get. And he's like, alright, uh... So he, he wrote this script that had, like, most of the first movie, and then he's like, I need a week to film and this much money to, to fill out the rest of the movie. And that's how part two was born. Yeah, if part, part one I would recommend genuinely, part two I recommend semi-ironically, and even then, just skip the parts that are part one. Especially if you haven't seen part one. Watch part one first. And if you have... If, if you come across part two without part one, skip those parts. It's it's better just just watch it the way it was intended in the original movie. The original movie is much better. There's a scene in this movie where he and his girlfriend go out to the movies. And she's like, oh, come on. Like, it's this movie about a killer Santa Claus. And he's like, wait, what? And then it shows the screen, and it's footage from part one. And I'm like, what the fuck? Silent Night, Deadly Night, part one is a movie in the universe of part two. It wasn't even like a reenactment, or like, uh, like just something that seemed similar. It was literally footage from part one. Uh, the only difference I can tell, it's, it's the scene of the guy robbing the gas station again. Uh, and the only difference I could tell was that in the original he says, Merry fucking Christmas, and then in the sequel they cut it to him just saying Merry Christmas. But like, he just, he goes to the movie theater and watches part one, and I was like, drunk out of my mind. <laughs> I'm like, I was prepared for a lot with part two. I was not prepared for him to watch part one. That tripped me out so hard. Near the end, he's trying to kill Mother Superior, who's in a wheelchair. She, she's she been in a wheelchair since part one. Um, and at one point, he, like, swings an axe at her and, like, cuts her chair. But she, like, stumbles out and rolls down the stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs, she just has a spare wheelchair. And it's like... Were, what, were you prepared for this? Why does a person in a wheelchair live in a house with stairs anyways? <laughs> she has she has a wheelchair at the top and a wheelchair at the bottom. You know, just in case she falls out of her chair at the top of the stairs. She gets around really fast for a woman in a wheelchair, too. <laughs> like, for, for a wheelchair bound, like, old lady... She, like, this is not, like, some young guy in a wheelchair. This is an old lady in a wheelchair. She moves fast. She's very strong. It's like, hmm, that's that's a little weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. It's goofy. It, it might be worth your time if that's the type of thing you're into. Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. I, I don't not recommend it. Obviously, it's not as good as the first, though. So, the last movie we watched was Christmas Evil, the original Killer Santa movie. Um, I don't have a Blu-ray for this. I said the Blu-ray was arriving last time, but it, it didn't. I, I ordered it during the Vinegar Syndrome Black Friday sale, but I ordered it with a bunch of stuff that was also pre-orders. So I'm like, okay, a lot of this stuff's not going to show up till, like, January, February. It's a bunch of pre-orders. And I was worried they wouldn't send Christmas Evil because they they were just going to send it with all of my pre-orders. But then they send me... They sent me Night Beast and Ice Cream Man and even their, like, excessively opulent Beastmaster release. This thing is absurd. And I'm like, why would you send me these, but not Christmas Evil? Where's Christmas Evil? Mmm, the one fucking Blu-ray I wanted them to sit, like, I'm glad I got these, but, you know, I'm not gonna watch these for a while. 
Um, this one I'm planning on recommending for Matt Presents sometime in 2021, so keep watching. You want to you wanna hear me talk about Ice Cream Man? Keep watching. Hit, hit subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, what are the other things you're supposed to... Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Um, watch my other videos. That's what I really care about. I don't, I don't give a shit if you subscribe. What? Watch my videos. <laughs> like, like, I could give a shit if you subscribe. Uh, it's it's all it's all about the views. I prefer views to subscribers. So, uh, Christmas Evil ended up being pretty similar to Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's also this sort of weird character study of this guy who suddenly believes he is Santa, but. I, I don't think it works quite as well with Christmas Evil because we don't we don't get enough backstory to like understand why he's doing this. Like when Billy does it, it's like you know what that makes sense. Honestly, like there's a logic to Billy's killing spree, and this movie the guy just decides like he is Santa and he needs to reward the good and punish the bad, but his idea of punishing the bad is killing them, but he doesn't even kill that many of them. Like, shockingly low body count on this one. Um, I'm disappointed. We were so close to hitting a thousand bodies before the end of 2020. It's, we are at 955 bodies across all of the movies I've shown. It's like, ah, we were we were 45 short. If all three of these movies could have upped the body count by 15, we'd have made it to 1,000 by the end of the year. Disappointing. Yeah, it's it's an odd movie. Uh, it's, it's like this guy works for a toy factory, and he's like obsessed with Christmas and Santa, and he, he's like, Children need Santa because he's, like, this moral compass for them. And without Santa, without this moral compass, society would fall apart. Um, it, basically, the, the shit Dennis Prager says about God, um, it's that, but for Santa. So he, he works at the toy factory, so he, like, gets a bunch of toys from the toy factory... And is going around giving them out to kids. But then he also murders a few people. But not even, like... He kills one guy that he's upset with. And then he kills these three other people. And I don't even know who they are or what they did. Like, maybe they explained that and I just missed it. But, like, he, he just, like, shows up and kills them. And then there's, like, this naughty kid he was following around. Like, writing notes about, like... Oh, this naughty kid, he was reading Penthouse Magazine and, and, like, being rude to the other children. He doesn't kill the kid, though. He just, he gives him a box full of dirt. That's his punishment. You got punished by Santa for being bad. Kill the fucking child. There's not enough child deaths in, in movies. More child death in movies. I demand it. Fun fact, I, I I didn't actually write the video, but I, I came up with a list for it was going to be the top 10 child murders in films. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. No, no, no ch top 10 child murders in films. But uh, n number one was Assault on Precinct 13, for those of you playing the home game. I think it was... There's Assault on Precinct 13, It, uh, Beware Children at Play, Who Can Kill a Child, oof, I forget what the others were, but <laughs> I, I made a list, I made the, the top ten child murders in films, and I'm like, yeah, that's too far, no, that's, can't do that, nope, 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 nope. This movie kind of tanked when it came out. Um, I there I think there was a little controversy around it, much like there was for Silent Night, Deadly Night. But uh, it gained sort of a cult following 
thanks to John Waters. John Waters is a fan of Christmas Evil. Um, he even like recorded a commentary track for it, and he. I hope that's on the Blu-ray. I wouldn't know. I haven't gotten the Blu-ray yet. Vinegar Syndrome. But if the John if the John Waters commentary is on there, all is forgiven, because I, I want to hear John Waters commentary for Christmas Evil. Yeah, it, it was not very popular, but then John Waters gave it a shout out, and and it sort of gained a cult following thanks to John Waters' recommendation of it. Which I wish would happen to more films. He's recommended some interesting stuff. Apparently, the the director came up with this idea. When he was high on marijuana, he was she he was high as fuck, and he's like, "Yo, what if Santa like had a knife and like killed people?" And then he inspired an entire genre of films. It's the first Killer Santa movie. I mean, that's the the whole genre owes it to one guy getting high. I'm sure someone would have done it eventually, like. T- there's fucking movies about killer everything. Of course there was going to be a movie about a killer Santa. I was actually... I, I'm going to go ahead and argue that... Uh, this Christmas Evil and Silent Night, Deadly Night are not truly killer Santa movies. They're just killers dressed as Santa. And if you really want to get down to it, they're not even the first ones to come up with like bad guys dressed as Santa, because you go back to the 70s and you got Silent Partner about a bank robber who dresses up as Santa. So. All those all those parents complaining that, like, oh my god, you can't do Killer Santa. It'll scare children. Well, first off, it's a horror movie. It's not for children. That's why it has an R rating. But second off... It's not even Santa. They're not saying Santa's an evil killer bad guy. We had to wait for Santa's sleigh for that. I have Santa's sleigh right behind me, don't I? There it is. Gotta wait for Santa's sleigh to get that. This is a weird movie. I don't know why I still have a copy of it. Brett Ratner? Fuck, did Brett Ratner direct this? I oh, he produced it, I think? What the fuck? Ugh. Fuck that guy. Brett Ratner's the pedophile, right? I'm not confusing him with someone else. I should probably double check that before I say fuck that guy. Fuck! Fuck, I got Brett Ratner confused with Brian Singer again. My bad, don't... Uh, not fuck Brett Ratner, he's made some decent movies. Fuck, fuck, uh, Brian Singer. Brian Singer, it's... Fuck that guy. My bad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Brett Ratner. I'm sorry. The 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 ending of this movie is kind of weird because like first, like uh the the guy dressed as Santa. Fuck, I can't remember his name. His name might be Billy. Fuck. I hope his name's. I think there is someone in this movie named Billy. Let me double check. I'm sorry. It was Harry. His name was Harry. At, at one point in the movie, like these people like light torch. There's like an angry torch carrying mob that like chase Harry around like he's a fucking universal monster or something like this it's not Frankenstein it's just a dude who's stabbing people like <laughs> what the fuck with the torches and the angry mob call the police and then and then like the very end of the movie is very uh birdman it reminded me of the ending of Birdman. Which, that's that's a weird crossover. Christmas Evil and Birdman. Uh, he, like, he, he drives his van off of a bridge, but then, like, the van flies up into the air like Santa's sleigh. And that's the end of... That's how the movie ends. And... <laughs> Apparently audiences didn't like that ending, but I, I'm down for it. Like, how else are you gonna end this shit? <laughs> yeah, just have him fly off into the night in his magic Santa van, and imply that he drove to his death. That's that's the implication. The implication is that he died. 
I choose to believe, I, I choose to take that ending 100% literally. He, he flew off and became the real Santa. That's how the movie ends. I refuse to look at anything metaphorically. So, uh, Christmas Evil, it's, it's interesting. There's stuff about it that I like, but it's not, it's, it's not great. It feels like the, the lesser version of Silent Night, Deadly Night, right? Like, Christmas Evil walked so that Silent Night, Deadly Night could run, you know? It's, like, the, the killer's motivations aren't as clear, the kills aren't as fun or creative, um... It's just, it's the limper version of Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's okay. It's, it's just, it's not the greatest. Uh, might be worth it for, like, the weird shit near the end. <laughs> Last time I asked you what your favorite Christmas horror movie was, uh, the correct answer is Gremlins. It's, Gremlins is the best. I mean, it's not as good as Gremlins 2, the new batch, but that's not a Christmas movie. That takes place on President's Day. Um, so, so I, I have to give it to Gremlins. If Gremlins 2 were a Christmas movie, you'd go to Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2 is the greatest movie ever made, uh, and you can't change my mind. It's, it's, it's Gremlins 2, the new batch, all the way to the bank. Um, Lino says his favorite Christmas horror is Don't Open Till Christmas. Uh, produced by the legendary Dick Randall, starring and part directed by Edmund Perdman, for getting sacked halfway through. It's a beautiful mess of a film. And who doesn't love to watch a film where a department store Santa gets his dick cut off while pissing? I have not seen Don't Open Till Christmas, but I am always in for a good dick severing. My battery just died. No big deal. We'll keep, we'll keep it going like this. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. There's no film recommendation this week because it's Christmas. I'm not doing... A film this Christmas, so two weeks from now I will be uploading a video about all the movies I watched during 2020. I used to do a year-end wrap-up of movies, but then I'm it's so time-consuming, and I watch so many movies, but then I'm like, hey, you know what? Not enough movies came out in 2020. There, there are very few 2020 movies to talk about, so uh, two weeks from now will be my 2020 year-in-review and I will recommend uh, the next movies then. I guess if I have a question for this week, it should be like, what was your favorite movie of 2020? It's an easy enough one. What was your favorite movie of 2020? Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, Happy all those other holidays people celebrate. I think Hanukkah's like way over already, uh, but Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa, happy Boxing Day, happy Solstice. Um, Solstice has passed also already, but... Merry Christmas, happy holidays.